it became a political issue from the very beginning. Uh, just as the debate on, uh, was, gonna, was starting on Capitol Hill, uh, Frank Luntz wrote a, a memo to, his, to, uh, to, to Republicans. He's a, a consultant and, a, and someone who is an expert in, in communications and, and, and linguistics. And he uh, uh, suggested, uh, quite frankly, that anything that the Democrats came up with should be characterized as a government takeover of health care. And his point of view was that, that this could be a winning issue for, uh, for the Republicans and that they should stand against anything that the, Republicans, that the Democrats came up with. Uh, interestingly, as, as Trudy noted, uh, the, the law uh, is built around Republican principles. The individual mandate, the exchanges, are, 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 are straight out of Republican policy and, and think tanks. Uh, but the Republicans were not willing to have anything to do with it for partisan reasons. And that, has, that began to take hold almost immediately to the point now that uh, uh, there is, uh, if you are identified with one political party, you, uh, on, uh, and if you uh, are a conservative, you're not going to be persuaded to believe that, that it is anything other than a government takeover of health care. It was done very skillfully uh, with uh, careful use of, um, of language and, and it was political motivation. That is, in my view, why you have 25 states not expanding. Uh, it is because it is controlled by politicians who have been persuaded that to have anything to do with Obamacare, uh, they wouldn't be conservative enough or Republican enough and would be primaried if they, if they even considered it. For equal opportunity uh, discussion here, um, let's just stipulate that the Democrats did the same thing that, the, that Frank Luntz did for the Republicans. They hired Celinda Lake. Uh, the money uh, came from a group called the Herndon Alliance, which was convened in 2006. And, can, and uh, the members were a whole bunch of people you would probably recognize. Many of the foundations, uh, healthcare foundations, were part of this. Uh, but a lot of other organizations as well, labor organizations, church groups, and so on. So they hired Celinda Lake to kind of do for them that what Frank Luntz had done very successfully for the Republicans over two decades. And so Lake went out and did some polling, and she found it was all based on whatever values Americans had and found that Americans didn't like the term single payer. They were really not interested in national health insurance, but they wanted affordable quality health care. So Celinda Lake wrote comparable memo memos uh, to the one once did, telling the Democrats that they need to refer to their um, endeavors at this point, there really wasn't any Obamacare at this point, as affordable quality health care. And if you think about that phrase and how it was used uh, by supporters of the ACA, uh, these people stayed on message, like probably even better than the Republicans. And you saw them use that phrase from um, the president, the secretary of HHS, on down to the grassroots people in Tennessee. And they didn't waver. And even uh, at the very end of October, when the secretary was under a lot of fire uh, for the, the website problems, she appeared on uh, Sanjay Gupta's show. And I counted that she had used the term, or a variation of it, eight times in the interview. So she was still using it at the end of October. And today, they're still using it. You're going to get affordable quality health care. Well, that's come back to bite them because we know that health care is not going to be affordable for certain segments of the population. And these are the ones you saw in the clips. So the interesting question for me is, why did it backfire a little bit on the Democrats and their supporters but it hasn't backfired on Frank Luntz and his supporters, and I haven't figured that one out yet. 